going to be slightly naughty now and um, talk about a, a little building in Melbourne as well. So, but we'll we'll certainly come back to um, the Gold Coast. Um, <clears throat> the the building in Melbourne I'd like to just flick through quickly is uh, the Swanson Square development um, in the far distance in the slide that you can see there, looking down the uh, civic spine of Melbourne, Swanson Street, um, the Shrine of Remembrance in the foreground. Um, I, I guess the issue we're trying to deal with here, or that seemed to be the biggest agenda for the architecture, was this notion of a private building that could be uh, have, a, have a significant public role. Um, and I guess not just a role of sort of within its own precinct and its own sort of urban sensibilities and qualities, um, but maybe something that could um, uh, create a, a significant uh, symbolic meaning um, within the sort of structure of the city. You can see in the distance there maybe the uh, face that we came up with. This is a view from the shrine looking back up Swanson Street. Uh, to the building in the distance. Uh, the building is uh, a, a simple building, really residential tower, um, 550 apartments of sort of mid-range quality um, uh, for uh, Grocon development. Uh, and you can see here just another view. Um, uh, again, I guess we, we like to think in, in doing projects that we scour around and look to see some of those funny, quirky things that turn up and Melbourne, because it has um, a central sort of grid and then a whole lot of different grids around it, you do get these uh, often surprising sort of axes uh, on tall buildings. And so this one from Flemington Road um, on the northwest side of the city coming in, you can see the rear side, the colourful side, I guess, of the project. Um, but just to get back to that theme of the sort of civic axis, you can see there if you're familiar with Melbourne or running up Swanson Street there at the bottom of that slide, you can see Hamer Hall just and the Art Centre spire just poking out. Um, you can see um, Federation Square and the, and the uh, Cathedral and then the Town Hall, of course, just beyond that. Um, the State Library a little bit beyond that, RMIT, sort of our site, Where's Wally at the, at the top end of the slide there, and then Melbourne Uni University beyond that. And so. Um, that axis, I guess, um, if we can call it that, or civic spine of Melbourne, uh, really collecting together uh, the sort of histories and stories um, of the city. One thing that the city really doesn't have, I guess, is any, any uh, major civic urban acknowledgement of um, Aboriginal um, history and tradition um, ongoing and past uh, of the city. And so, it occurred to us um, a, a, as we uh, developed this project that this, this would be a possibility. Um, you can see here, this is a shot just at the top of Swanson Street near RMIT, and you can see the RMIT design hub is that little um, building in, in front of the face there. Uh, a, a very sort of active uh, end of the city with both universities in close proximity. The face that we uh, worked with was that of William Barrick, who was uh, sort of the last um, indigenous leader of, uh, uh, of the Wurundjeri people in Melbourne. Uh, and we uh, worked very closely with the Wurundjeri community to um, develop up that the particular solution that we came to. The, the technique we've used is, is really a digitising of an, of an image um, and by using a sort of stripping technique we could come up with this, these black and white bands of which the figuration of the band um, creates the illusion, I guess, um, of, of uh, facial recognition. Um, you can see here then that, that um, image is then wrapped, um, somewhat stretched, um, and I probably should say um, exquisitely refined in order to get the perfect association between the, uh, you know, the very strong and usual 
um, functional requirements of a residential building uh, and the desire for people to be able to take full advantage of views uh, and, and so on, uh, but also to uh, uncompromisingly, I guess, achieve this sense of a sort of balance, I guess, between, if you like, the shrine at one end of that uh, composition, or one end of that street, um, as being, uh, for, uh, for many, I, I guess, a major symbol of the new nation of Australia, um, versus, uh, not so much versus, but complemented um, by an image like this, um, signifying the sort of deep history of that land. Um, a, a, a shot a little up close. The, the lower part of the building uh, we looked at, um, you, you can see there there's a, there's a sort of dot screen uh, over a car park area. There's five levels of car parking in a podium. Uh, and we've deployed something that we've used before back at the National Museum, uh, a, a sort of writing in Braille on the building. And you can see there that those uh, spun aluminium discs uh, that are really quite gorgeous in themselves, they're quite big. They're, they're about uh, 12, uh, 1500, I think, sort of diameter discs. They spell out uh, Wurundjeri, I am who I am. Um, uh, making the uh, panels, uh, uh, Moldcam, uh, the Brisbane uh, group here, we've worked with over the years. Uh, they were designing and uh, ultimately manufacturing in, uh, in Indonesia. And you can see here those panels being made up there. Every panel, of course, is different. Uh, and so the, I guess the, the intimate sort of engineering that goes into them um, uh, was obviously very significant. We wanted something that was super sort of clean and uh, uh, without a lot of um, junk on them. Here you can see the first of them arriving on site. Some of them are actually curved as well because they, they, they take the curve of the building. Um, you can see the way in which the fixings are sort of fully integrated into those panels. They're a sort of um, impregnated foam uh, fiberglass system um, and then um, in place you can start to see looking down the axis back to the shrine there you can see the way in which the panels are used to to kind of intensify if you like that sense of the vista and the view from the building um, so that from up close the panels become something of a, a sort of joyous um, interesting shaped um, sort of delightful um, uh, framing of your view and from a distance they become that um, uh, enormous um, image of, uh, of the Wurundjeri sort of um, father-like looking over the city. Um, on the top of the building there's a, uh, there's a sort of common area and this is just showing the sort of uh, outdoor deck area there. You can see inside there's a there's a sort of cinema room, there's a, a major kitchen and dining so on area where you can hang out. Also areas that you can rent, um, the, the occupants of the building can rent um, to have special occasions and that sort of thing. Now the back side of the building is sort of quite different um, and in a way uh, uh, to some degree we were thinking we didn't, we didn't want a, a back I guess to the building. Obviously we didn't want the idea of the back of uh, William Barrack's head or something. We didn't think that was quite going to be uh, the right feel. So the building, in fact, takes up quite a strong uh, other quality from the, uh, from the north side. And here you can see the sort of pixelation of um, uh, a simple um, painted steel panel. Uh, the lower part of the building also integrating a sort of perforated um, system. Uh, I I think from memory we had something like 4,780 or something panels uh, and, and about uh, 18 colours, I think, um, to generate this sort of sense of shape and form um, mapped onto what is otherwise a pretty sort of chubby, large floor plate, um, uh, somewhat austere figured building. Um, just showing up close there a little bit as well. Um, 
And then the lower part in the car park where it is uh, wrapped by these panels uh, using a perforated panel um, to allow for that air circulation within the car park. Um, so looking from the north to the building, um, creating really a very strong um, and particular kind of identity for the building other than uh, the face, which then faces the other direction south down the axis of, uh, of the Civic Spy on Swanson Street. You can see in the foreground of that too, there's, uh, there's the malt store building, um, uh, which is a, was a heritage building, which, uh, uh, as its name might suggest, was actually full of concrete tanks. So in a way, it was never really a building. Uh, but we managed to, to get agreement to remove uh, all but three of those tanks um, to maintain that sense of history and actually deploy the building as a, an office and, uh, and sort of food and beverage offer, um, which has come up, extremely, uh, come up extremely well. Just to return to that view looking down uh, the axis, um, albeit from a helicopter, um, uh, down that Flemington, uh, Flemington Road axis from the north side. Again, just picking up, um, I, I guess, that sense of a marker, uh, a, a kind of realisation, I suppose, that the city has these kind of quirky angles that it generates. Um, just in Swanson Street there, showing the malt store building renovated in the, uh, as a kind of podium, uh, through which you enter to the new building um, behind and you can you can see the sort of um, treatment of that face as it wraps um, around uh, even even off the uh, axis line. Um, there's a, a, a new way through there and and a kind of exhibition of the history of the uh, malt store and of course the whole site was the Carlton United uh, brewery for a long time certainly until um, it was still there when I was at university up the road. Um, and uh, here, just a, just a snap of the, uh, of the foyer of, of our building. Uh, the building became, uh, seemed to hit the front page of the age a little before Daniel Grollo had time to actually open the building. He'd, he'd had it sort of masked for a long time with uh, black plastic and he was wanting to uh, see if he could have some moment of denouement, but it was really just a bit too hard. So gradually the building uh, or the face appeared in the city and on this day I think they took away the last sort of panels around the eyes and nose of the, um, of the building. We did have a launch, um, you can see here Auntie Joy from the Wurundjeri um, leadership and other um, members of her family um, around on the, uh, uh, this was on the upper floor of another one of Brocon's buildings in the city and you can see in the background the building as you look across um, so the building has this sort of ability, uh, sort of almost uncanny ability to be looked at from all kinds of angles um, around the city and it was also lit up for that occasion. Now let me return to the main game of, uh, of the Gold Coast um, and just set the scene a little bit. I, I was going to focus really on the Art Tower as such but it needs, it needs um, some chatter about uh, about the overall scheme, we um, certainly we, we we wanted to set the uh, agenda, I suppose, for the site as being something that was about change and unpredictability. And and the Gold Coast, of course, is a wonderful kind of example of that. You can see here um, a shot of it in 1960 odd with um, you know single story or two story buildings, and of course today with its um, extraordinary forms of uh, high rise buildings. Um, so, we, instead of looking to design, you know, sort of the iconic thing as such, I guess we set about searching for some kind of DNA for the site, if we could call it that, something that would be, would generate um, outcomes almost, uh, almost under its own steam or its own kind of power. And I suppose our, um, our eureka moment, although we didn't, run naked down Swanson Street at the time, but we landed on this idea uh, of, the, of the Voronoid, which you see in these sort of natural forms. Um, they're often expressed in sort of cellular type um, 
elements you can see here in the leaf and in the fruit and even in the cracking of, of uh, dried earth, um, wings and things like that. I think we see... Um, We're going, if our animations are going to work, but they're probably not. Um, uh, the, the nice thing about um, our Varanoi is that it's generated from a single point, or often called a seed. You can just probably see that in that image of sort of a black dot. And then there are sort of boundaries around that that are specified. So it's a kind of mathematical system, if you like. The, the intriguing thing about it is if you move any, any one of those points, everything else adjusts um, to take up that movement. Um, and that was the kind of thing, I guess, that we were searching for over this very large site area. Um, I'm not sure why these are. <laughs> Sorry, animation's not going to work today. Um, uh, but you can see here this, uh, if you can imagine that shot, the way the foreignoid elements and the seeds, you can see those little golden seed dots, as they move around um, wherever they may choose, um, the shape, size, figure of those um, cells move with them. And I suppose this, this was the strategy of our master plan um, and, and placement of and treatment of including buildings, but most importantly, in fact, the land shape, form and, and sort of activity um, would be interpreted within these um, voronoidal so-called shapes. Um, and th this meant that uh, the project had the, had the sort of power to be constantly reinterpreted into the future. Uh, so just going to the Art Tower, um, Tori's already mentioned that our, our first stage of the competition didn't show um, a tower as such, um, but by the time we got to the second, um, we, we, we thought we'd got onto the right thing. Uh, to do that, we just, uh, I guess our, our, ins our inspiration uh, for the tower was both sort of um, natural and man-made uh, in an obvious way, I guess there. We, we thought, I suppose, of other, other towers in exhibition type operations. Of course, the Eiffel Tower, um, 1892 or something, was it, in the, uh, the Paris World Exhibition. Uh, and and uh, Tori's already shown you an example of the, uh, the Olympic Games, the London Olympic Games, the Anishkabur Tower as well. So the tower, I guess, has this kind of um, uh, uh, tradition um, in, in kind of exhibition zones. And it's in, intriguing, I suppose, to recall that. The Eiffel Tower, of course, um, the literati hated it at the time. <coughs> And there was a whole lot of uh, uh, writing and uh, outrage about how horrible, uh, how horrible it was. Um, we haven't had too much of that; just a little bit of that. Um, of course, um, other other examples are barely a tower, I suppose, but the Guggenheim Museum in in uh, New York, the old one, um, with its sort of spiralling uh, experience of of the art display. Um, there's, there's towers that are um, associated with museums, but not uh, this one by Isazaki, of course, but not really occupied. And uh, uh, Tori's already mentioned this one, which is, again is really just that one floor at the top of the building. Uh, and I suppose the, the, uh, the Tate, um, the extensions to the Tate in London um, now move to, I think it's about 10 or 12 storeys of um, exhibition and other activity space. So um, not quite a tower, I guess. And as Tori mentioned, probably the, um, the new museum in New York is the closest thing to... Um... So I, I guess as we were contemplating the sort of life forces uh, of the site that we've been developing at the Gold Coast, um, Jack and the Beanstalk, popped into our minds. We were looking for something that was going to um, uh, uh, sort of erupt, I suppose, and, and generate itself um, this idea of the, the vertical tower. 
the, the double helix, of, of, of course, is sort of a, a, another sort of symbolic um, and structural idea of you know the life forces, uh, and then to the the tower itself. Again, this is a little animation that takes you up the front of that tower, but you can glimpse in this shot. Um, there's those baubles running around uh, the building, which indicate one of those. Um, uh, uh, helix elements and then in the next shot you'll see um, we've got an external spiralling uh, stair uh, that also runs around the building so we get these two spiralling uh, um, figures that, that cut the shape of that tower and uh, at the top the, the, uh, the stair turns into uh, a, a sort of um, launch point, I guess, and as Tori's mentioned, we proposed the possibility of a thoroughly art experience, of course, um, bungee jump. Um, perhaps you could dress up as uh, the scream or something like that. Um, the the uh, plan um, of the site, I mean, of, of course, um, Apart from this desire for some kind of life force vertical eruption, I guess, there was clearly the issue of the, the sort of amount of site that was being taken up by what is a, a relatively large museum. It's about um, 6,000 square metres of exhibition space. So that's, that's a pretty big footprint if you put it over, um, you know, say, a couple of storeys. Uh, and whereas um, by creating a a largish sort of podium and then uh, about 14 storeys, equivalent, equivalent I suppose to about, um, I think it's a bit under 100 metres high, so equivalent to about a 30 storey residential tower. So certainly not uh, in any way um, contesting the space of the, uh, the other really tall buildings at the Gold Coast, but, in, but, but more um, offering, I suppose, the, the public the opportunity to, to fully experience a sort of vertical format, um, which, is, which is still fairly rare. It's, it's rare to be able, to, as a member of the public anyway, it's rare to be able to um, go through um, tall buildings at all. Let me just flick through these last few slides. <coughs> Um, you can see here the sort of ground level. There are some larger spaces there. Um, there's a thousand square metre um, multi-purpose exhibition and or other functions. There's a theatre there. And then the vertical circulation, we've got th sort of three lifts, one goods lift and one stair connecting all. So it's possible to go, you know, these are the sort of um, uh, entry spaces um, or ideas about them. It's possible then to, to to move around the building in various ways. You can go to the top level, look at the view, have a coffee and work your way down, or you could go to any particular floor uh, and work your way up and down from that floor. Um, so there's, the, and at the level of um, delivering artworks and goods, it's, it's a very direct and straightforward system through the goods loop. Various spaces just uh, at, at this stage indicative of those Spaces that major space that can be divided into two or three spaces, um, and a typical kind of layout providing about 600 square metres um, of exhibition space on each floor, which is a pretty desirable sort of amount. It's not too much, uh, and then it can be connected both through voids and uh, and circulation with the floor above or floor below. Um, and just flashing through those last few general views and the tower itself. That's about it, I think. Time. On time. <laughs>